Tori P on Facebook asks your thoughts on iodine supplementation. She asks, can we get this through kelp? Because there is varying opinions on this. And for vegans, being that the oceans are so severely contaminated with radiation and pollutants, is it safe to take supplements? No doubt we need iodine. We talked about that with our thyroid question. Um, there's no doubt that we need iodine to be healthy. Uh, and without it, we're dead. So, kind of important. Can we get it in the ocean from ocean products? Yeah, and you're right. Now that we have Fukushima and we've got other, you know, and we, we've got trillions of tons of oil dumped in the oceans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The question is, is it safe to eat out of the ocean? And the answer to that is probably safer to eat out of your toilet than to eat out of the ocean nowadays. If we're going to uh, continue to get iodine in the natural way, we're going to have to start farming it on dry land, I mean in land, and we're going to have to make lakes, saltwater lakes, and, and grow our own kelp, wakame. There are, there are lots of sea vegetables. In fact, the only peoples in the world that we know are, have adequate amounts of iodine are Japanese and Koreans who live according to their traditional lifestyles, right? Not the ones that have been westernized. There's a well-known um, Lugol solution, 5%, uh, which is a combination of uh, iodine, which is two eyes together, molecular iodine, and there's iodide, which is the, uh, the salt anionic form of iodine. Um, and you put those together and you have Lugol solution. It's a great way. You can either take the drops, you can get it at any compounding pharmacy, you can either take the drop, put like four or five drops on your thighs and you'll watch, you'll watch them absorb quickly. When they stop absorbing so quickly you know you're starting to fill up your iodine tank. Um, or you can just put it in water and drink it. It doesn't taste that good but you can disguise it. Uh, because we need to fill up our tank. But you got to be careful with iodine too because too much iodine suppresses thyroid function. In fact, that's what the best way to, if someone's got Graves' disease where they're hyper, they've got an autoimmune condition that's hyperthyroid, uh, best way to control it, uh, the easiest and safest way is with excess iodine. Excess iodine will turn down the uh, production of thyroid. So you've got to be careful with it. And uh, so you just want to monitor it sub subtly or you can monitor it with uh, temperatures. You know, taking, it's cool, you call it basal body temperatures. Every morning you take your temperature for five minutes you average that over a five to six day period, and if you're less than 97.8, now you're getting sub, you're getting hypothyroid. You need to be between 97.8 and 98.6. That's where you want to be, okay? Uh, axillary. That's a way of monitoring it yourself. Besides Lugol's, there's something called Iodorol, which is basically Lugol's in a pill form. And now Lugol's actually has a pill form. So there's ways of getting iodine. Uh, and we definitely need it, and we're all definitely don't have enough of it, and we're all getting too much fluoride, chloride, and bromide. So get rid of baked goods, and make sure your water has been, uh, is, is just water. You know, when you drink water, just drink water. And make sure there's no chloride, fluoride, or any of those other things in it. So the less of those you have, and the more iodine, the more you can ensure thyroid health.